put a dent into this at all. <laughs> all the time we are tired we are dirty we eat a lot of McDonald's because it's fast and convenient I don't endorse that um, and my girls are all tired so that's okay because August abundance is one of our favorite times of the summer and there's just so much good stuff blooming in the garden so we're gonna show you what we've got My goodness, they are doing so beautifully. The queen limes. This looks. Uh, this is queen lime orange. I'm just so in love with the variegation in these petals, and um, they come in a variety of different tones too. Down here, we've got one that's a little bit older, and as it ages, it turns into this really lovely apricot. Versus this one, which is new, and is much more of like a peachy orange. And I just think side by side, like these are some of our favorites for wedding work. I love, love growing these. These are my queen lime blushes. Oh, bug. You can always tell queen lime blushes uh, because they have that nice, beautiful blush pink center where the queen lime oranges have that more orangey center. Um, I just, these are some of our favorites. We love, 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 love these. Uh, these, I think once upon a time I told you that these were the wrong color. These are actually the Carmine Benary Giants. I think last time I thought that these ones were, and that's incorrect, this is wine. So this one is Benary Giant in wine. And this is the Benary Giant in Carmine. They're so, so beautiful. Really happy with how those have turned out. Uh, we also have a rock there. We also have Benary Giants. Uh, I believe this is salmon. Could be salmon, maybe. I think they're bigger at the other farm. There's a lot of things at the other farm. But like I said, forgot where I planted what. Don't mind me, just gonna toss a rock out of the garden because stepping my toe on that, that hurt. Here we have a patch of cosmos because this is where we had our cosmos planted last year and uh, they reseeded and I didn't have the heart to cut them down. As we all know, I love Cosmos. So, my whites get sacrificed to the Japanese beetles, which haven't been this, as bad this year as they usually are uh, because we had so much rain in July and now their breeding season is almost over. So for all the rain that I complained about, one thing I'm thankful for is a complete lack of Japanese beetles. Uh, one of my favorites that we're growing this year is actually the Benary Yellow. I just think, I know yellow is supposed to be like the Pantone color of the year, and I planted a whole bunch of these that are actually at the other farm, but I kind of love them. They're so cheery, and they look really nice in bouquets of sunflowers. Um, 
So the height on our zinnias is really good. This is my other favorite one. Um, but I really love the wine colored zinnias. I think they're just beautiful. Cause this is a queen lime blush in her, all her glory. So, so beautiful. So right beside our zinni patch, we have three rows of dahlias. So as I've talked about before, these dahlias are all propagate dahlias, which means that we uh, took cuttings from tubers, created new dahlia plants. Um, the reason I did that is because I tend to only buy one of each specific type of dahlia at the beginning of the season. I find um, it's one of the easiest ways to kind of increase my stock. It's also one of the cheaper ways to increase my stock. So I'm gonna go through. We've got a lot of dahlias blooming, so this is a good time to be out. You'll notice as well that I have all of my dahlias covered with taffeta bags. So we do that for a couple reasons. One of them is usually in July, the Japanese beetles are terrible. As we get into August, the tarnished plant bugs are really bad um, and the earwigs. I always have so many earwigs because dahlias are dark and they're moist and that's where earwigs like to hide. Um, and so we use the, um, the bags on top of our dahlias to kind of preserve the blooms so that when we harvest our blooms, they're just way better looking. Our, we need actually another round of staking, which is fine, um, but we should be able to see too, kind of as we come down. So we have this year, because one of my goals for 2021 was to label all of our dahlias. So we have all of our dahlias labeled, um, and then on the back, they have a SKU number. So this is for my own personal purposes. When we do stock, um, I have a master list we will be putting um, the SKU numbers on with the, tu with the tubers um, in when we store them over the winter and that way I will know which ones did really well. But because this is not our farm, uh, I have these all labeled so that the homeowner as she walks through the gardens is actually able to tell what variety she likes and at the end of the summer she'll mark any that she loved um, and we'll give her a tuber as a thank you that she can then plant in her own gardens because she also has really, really lovely gardens. So this here, this is one of my favorite dahlias that we grow. Um, this is Linda's baby. I'm just gonna pull, pull this off so you can see it does a really nice job of protecting the dahlia. So this is Linda's baby. I just think she is one of the most beautiful ball dahlias snip her right off because she's ready to harvest look look at how gorgeous she is I mean the coloring on her is just beautiful I know peaches and cream is all the rage right now but I really think that Linda's baby has like she's got it she's gorgeous so we have a lot of her planted please <laughs> plant two plants um, this is a variety of dahlia called honeymoon so this is a Kind of like a smaller dinner plate dahlia. Um, we're gonna be harvesting a whole bunch of these today. But she's got these really beautiful, like, take this off. Well, she has this really, really beautiful center. Come on up. She's so pretty. Oh, look at that. She's got, like, she almost, she glistens in the sunshine. Like, she, she sparkles. Um, she's got this really beautiful kind of yellow center and then these gorgeous apricot petals, like, as they go towards the back. Um, so when I harvest this, I'm actually gonna harvest it all the way down, probably to this stem here, and that will give me a good length just for some straight dahlia bouquets. Every time I pull a taffeta bag off, I put a taffeta bag on another bloom to protect it. Because when we don't, we get them like this. And then, whoops. So this guy's already got some tarnished plant bug damage on her. So I'm just gonna actually cut that one right off. Yeah, you can see that the tarnished plant bug got in here, so it's actually not gonna get full petals, so compost. She is beautiful as well. This one I think is called Normandy Bright Day. I don't know what does the sign say. This is, yep, Normandy Bright Day, it's right here. So she's kind of peachy. I'm gonna uncover these so that we know which ones to cut. Also, it's like really hot outside today because southwestern Ontario in the summer is a blast. 
Oh, she's gorgeous. So she's got like this really stunning peach, these yellow tips, and then as she opens, she keeps those yellow tips and gets this really kind of pretty raspberry color here, but the inside of her is all peach. So like, she looks similar to Honeymoon, but side by side, they're very different flowers. This one is, this is Brittany Ray, and my name's Brittany, so of course we're gonna have Brittany Ray. And she needs to be netted as well, but she's not quite ready to harvest. She's got this really stunning kind of like purpley magenta. When she opens, she's yellow in the center. I actually have um, another dahlia called Nicholas, because that's my husband's name and that's funny. Um, and we're gonna try and crossbreed them because that's weird, but also kind of hilarious. So that's gonna be my project for this year. Come on, we have Colorado Classic. Colorado Classic is gorgeous. We had so many tubers from this plant last year <laughs> because our season was so late and she didn't bloom in 2020. Um, so she's blooming now, which is great. And I just like, oh, have a look at her. Here's a good example of not getting out to the fields early enough. This one is dead. And yeah, didn't get pollinated, so we don't have any seeds to collect. Goodbye. You all the weakest link. Oh, this is the stage of bud that I like to color them, cover them in. Um, two reasons why. One, the stem itself is uh, sturdier, so it won't bend the stem when you put the top of the bag on. Um, and then it'll protect it from the bugs. Bunch of sweet Lucy's. Possibly also Smoky Mountains. I'm not sure. I'm looking at it now and I think it might have been a mislabel, so that'll be a fun surprise. There's a few of them that I think I've labeled as Sweet Lucy because the original tuber was labeled as that, but I'm not 100% sure that those dahlias are still what I think they are. So we'll just, uh, just keep covering. So my husband decided to go to Walmart one day and come home with dahlias, and when I was propagating I didn't realize that these were the Walmart flowers, and I personally don't like them. <laughs> But not my fave. I mean, they're okay, but they're not my fave. And this one didn't open up very nicely, so it's compost. Whatever mustard it is. These are called ball assorted. So these must be misnomers that also came from something, and I don't know what they are. However, this is a really nice ball assorted. <laughs> so we're gonna try and ID this girl this summer. Sometimes my dahlia patch is just, it's the first year I've really, really tried to like, figure it out. But she's kind of a pretty orange dahlia. She's got a nice shape to her, so we'll keep her. Nice tangerine color. Um, it seems to be putting off a lot of blooms too, so I'm actually quite happy with that. This here, the one that bloomed that I missed, because <laughs> as we can see, this is the one that I've actually got wrapped. This is Penn Hill Dark Watermelon. Um, first, first time growing this one for us, but I mean like, whoo, look at that, eh? That's stunning. Now what I'm gonna have to do is go through and make sure there's no earwigs in the petals, but we're definitely gonna harvest her today. This is my favorite ones that we're growing, and I'm gonna have to go around to the other side. Oh, stay there. This one's called Irish Glow. This is a variety I think I first saw in Florets Discovering Dahlias, and I think that the color on it, like, they're so cute. Look at how beautiful that is. Oh, she's just like a perfect little ball. Um, then we have Snowflake, which is a very low blooming dahlia, but also like kind of adorable. And doing well for the fact that she's white and I don't have her buds covered. This one here, this is Woodland's Taco Time. She's also a ball dahlia. This one's not quite ready to harvest yet, but I'm a, whew, look at the color on her. She's quite lovely. Um, and I don't know if you can see it there, but there's a tarnished plant bug down here. So I'm gonna just cover you back up. Cause you're not quite ready. This is Eveline here. Just lovely white dahlia with this kind of like gorgeous lavender center to her. She is ready to harvest today. 
pull my tail for the bags off. Oh, look at that. Look at how pretty she is. I used her actually in a wedding bouquet this past weekend. Just such a lovely Dahlia. This one here is from Cliff Rusty. Now, um, this is what happens when we don't bag our Dahlias. So, I don't know if you can see, but there's like, there's a lot of bug damage in there. I cannot sell this Dahlia. So, I'm not going to try. But yeah, so that's what happens when we don't bag them. This one's, I think, called Beautiful. She's all right, not my fave. This one, on the other hand, this is Smoky Mountain. And Smoky Mountain is a delightful Dahlia that I love dearly. However, I want the long stem, so I'm gonna cut that center one out. Because if I cut that center guy out, these it'll the plant will put more effort into these two onto the side here, and that's more what I want. This one's not super long, so it's pretty. Look at like it's, it's honestly gorgeous. Honestly. Not American. Um, honestly gorgeous. And uh, yeah, this I think has become one of my favorites. It's just like the per the center is like this really gorgeous lavender color and then it turns like, I don't even know, orangey pink. I love it. So pretty. But we have Natalie G up in here. She hasn't bloomed yet. Um, we lost her original tuber to and probably some sort of animal because it was down in the low field. Um, this one here says it's Ivanetti, but Ivanetti's dark, so that seems like that might be Natalie G too. Again, the fun of having flowers is that you don't always know. Well, this is Kamano Love because we love her and because she's the color of love. Like first love, right? Like pink and adorable. She's so cute. Be a flower farmer, they said. It will be fun, they said. Then it is fun. <laughs> it is fun. There's a lot of flowers. Then we have a whole bunch of Vivian Russells. Uh, so this is another one that didn't bloom last year but produced a lot of tubers. And I think that she's a beautiful white dahlia for weddings. Um, I know everybody's into cafe au lait and florels and breakouts and yada yada. Um, but sometimes when you're doing bouquets, it's just really hard to use a dahlia that, that, that is that big. And the nice thing about Vivian Russell is that she produces like these gorgeous creamy white flowers and like there's little hints of blush and lavender in there. Um, so like this is a really good example up in here. Oh, skeeter. Um, yeah, I'm gonna cut her. So like this is a really good example up in here where she's got all of these such pretty colors right like you can see the blush pink coming in and like it's just she's creamy she's got the little bit of yellow down in the tips there and I just think she's a super underrated Dahlia um, that needs to be used more so we have a lot of her planted but then we have a couple assorted ball Dahlias again that we have no names for because again my husband went to Walmart, um, and now I have a bunch of dahlias that I, I don't I don't know what they are. So, um, this is one. I am a fan. I am a. F I love. I love. I love this dahlia. I was not expecting to have this gorgeous little palm, but like, look at the color on her. So she's a misnomer. She has no name. So she's, we're claiming her. Um, and we're going to give her a name this year. So we're going to call, possibly call her uh, McKenna. <laughs> I love her. She's adorable. So am I. <laughs> yes, yes, you are. <laughs> <laughs> so this one here is called Arbob. This is obviously not bloomed all the way yet. Oh man, the alias looks so good. Oh. The only bummer of top of the bags is you have to like... Oh, look at the color on this guy though. I'm really excited for our Bob. I'll show you a picture of him like in the actual video himself. Um, but it's just, it's like this, I don't know, like rusty red color. Kind of burgundy. Kind of like 
terracotta-y. I'm in love. We have one called Too Sexy, which if I'm correct is this one here, which this one might be in the process of blooming. And we will offer you a better photo. Oh, she's called Too Sexy because her color is too sexy. Look at that, eh? Now that's the color of love. Yep, I'm weird, it's okay. My kind of just like scoffed a little behind the camera and was like, don't do that again. Uh, then we have Marigold Alley, right? Hate Marigold Alley. Marigold Alley didn't look like this yesterday. I don't have to harvest Marigold Alley. I don't like Marigold Alley. But the bees like Marigold Alley. Oop, that was a fail. Uh, then we have Carnation Alley, which we all know how I feel about the carnations. We have some, oh, Miss, some Gonfrina. Forgot that was in there. Uh, but we have more zinnias because we had random stuff that didn't grow here. I think we pulled mignonette out of here. We have a squash plant. So for anyone wondering, squash plants, those three seed. Yep, um, it's getting powdery mildew. It's been too wet, don't care. This is Dara. And in case anybody's wondering, we love Dara. We're gonna be sipping some of her today. Uh, looks like I missed some and that's gonna be seeding. So we'll be pulling seeds from this this year. Uh, bee balm is on this side here, which actually got a good cut yesterday. So there's lots of new shoots coming up. We'll get a second flush again in a couple weeks. Simosia, which has just popped. Um, I'd also like to point out that I'd also like to point out that the uh, the the cosmos, this little section of nonsense here, uh, that those those were picked yesterday, um, and and now now we gotta go through we gotta pick them again because I thought it was a smart idea to plant all those cosmos and um, yeah no it was so so smart idea yeah smart idea. <laughs> which looks a little different from the last time you guys saw it. Um, we <laughs> Apparently, we don't know how to put bags on Dahlia. So here, I'm gonna show you what you don't want to do. This Dahlia cannot open all the way because whoever bagged this Dahlia bagged the whole stem, not just the Dahlia. So I'm gonna take this off, let that open a little. Um, none of these Dahlias are, are out, I mean, they're, we don't know what half of them are. I think they're genuinely just labeled as a whole, whole, whole. This is gonna be fun. Woo! Oh, look at her. I think it's called Fire Pot. Um, these are collections of like cheap dahlias that we bought over the year as well. Some of these are from the homeowner. So as I've mentioned in other videos, the homeowner of this property, um, they have a, a big connection to dahlias itself. And so some of what we're doing is like, restocking their dahlias and so some of these in here are theirs like this one here uh, not a Colorado classic apparently it's one that we've grown in years past um, I mean it's definitely an informal decorative and it's already past the point where I can pick and sell it but it's got some nice colors to it so like we'll grow that again um, I just, the other reason why I like to keep dahlias bagged is because when you get dahlias like this, there's, there's certain dahlias that I want to cross poll pollinate. So when you get open faced dahlias like this, this isn't necessarily a trait that I want in some of my dahlias later on. So by keeping it covered, the bees can't get to it. And that's also pretty important. Okay, so I'm not gonna show you guys every dahlia in the field, but I did want to show you some of our favorites. Um, so there's a patch here that I've saved that were actually seedlings from last year. Um, and this, look at the bee, his butt's just like covered in pollen, I don't know if you can see it. <laughs> um, but anyways, this is one of the ones that I'm really proud of. It's it's a nice little yellow ball dahlia. Um, it does have an open center to it, so it's not anything that we would like breed for sh like show, but it is a really, really lovely little dahlia. I mean, it doesn't have a huge petal count, I think there's like a maximum of like five layers of petals on there, but it's got a good stem to it, and it's pretty. It's like that baby duck yellow that apparently is the Pantone color of the year. Then there's a bunch of like open faced dahlias. These I'm not covering. Uh, these are from the homeowner. I just, I don't, I don't love them. So 
so I'm, I'm kind of sacrificing them to the bugs. I, the goal here is basically just to be able to give her some of her tubers back. Um, and so, whereas like normally you cover dahlia so that you're gonna sell the stems. Um, when we're selling these at like the market book for market bouquets, they don't last long enough that I'm gonna do anything super useful with. So instead, we're just going to let them grow, divide them, give them tubers, probably take some pictures of them and we might sell some of those tubers in the fall. So, so this is high blood fire. We, we grew a lot of these last year and there's a lot of them in the field this year. So it's a good burgundy dahlia, it's got good stem length, it's, it's smaller so it's good for wedding work as well. Um, it's just got a daintier stem to it. Random purple dinner plate, so that'll be fun, no idea. So like every once in a while with those like silly Walmart dahlias, you get like, you get some nice ball dahlias, right? Like, this one doesn't have a name. I don't know what the variety is on it. It doesn't say varieties when it says ball assorted, but I mean, she's pretty. She got good coloring. Nice shape. She's gonna go and mark the case. You've heard me complain before about specific places that I've ordered dahlias from where the tubers didn't look as great as I'd like it to be. Um, and Cafe Olay's are really one of those where I'm just, I haven't had good luck with them. I don't, I know they're super popular right now, but it's just a lot of space in my garden for a dahlia that's not producing well enough. And I mean, it might be September before we see a single bloom from her, if at all. Last year I didn't get one single bloom from my Cafe Olay's. We've got another one of those little random, this is, because these are all ball dahlias, so this is another one of the ones we'll call McKenna. Apparently this one's got a little bit of, um, gen the genetics are unstable. So you can see that little bit of white petal in there. Uh, this one's nice. It's got a little bit of like a tangerine feel to her again. So she's gonna come with us today. Yeah, it's the only thing about taffeta bags. I mean, like, there's no bugs on these. Like, look at how pretty that is. She's a nice color. This one says Normandy Sweet Lucy. Apparently this is Normandy Sweet Lucy. <laughs> I like her. She's like a four to six inch cactus informal decorative. Because, yeah, that's a thing. But it's a pretty dahlia. These will be available tomorrow. In our flower stand. This is tartan. My husband picked that one out. We all know how I feel about those stupid purple ones. And then this one on this side, this is Cornell Bronze. Cornell Bronze is a fan favorite. So she is different for sure from the tangerine color one earlier. I mean, she's just pretty. Whew. That's a gorgeous flower. Down here, yep, this is Franklin Fiesta. I just like, whoo. Whoo, McKenna, whoo. She's a Fiesta. Look at, I just love the color and the variegation on a lot of these ball dahlias. They make them so interesting. And ball dahlias are a great cut flower because they last long. So like, so beautiful. So there's that little bit of like lavender color. Okay. Then we have a couple. So we have Marne, which hasn't bloomed yet. Uh, Breakout, which we had had planted, but as you can see has been, it, it is no longer there. It broke out, if you will. Don't laugh at my corny joke. Uh, Clyde's Choice is this one. No, that might be a lie. This, is, this one's Clyde's Choice, right? Separate plant, Clyde's Choice. This one's Vasio Megos. It's mega. It's like, this is a really, 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 really beautiful dinner plate dahlia. And if it'll let me unwrap her, you will see. I mean, Look at how gorgeous that, and I mean like, actually how big Dahlia. It's not as big as Florel, but that's a big Dahlia. 
So that is this flower farm. Overall, fairly pleased. And uh, yeah, thanks for joining us. So we're gonna cut some stuff now. I'll show you the harvest after we're done because uh, it's getting warm and I don't wanna have to set up a tripod. So. So this is the biggest dahlia harvest uh, we've had this year so far. I'm so happy with the colors. So this is the second farm. Got rows of zinnias here. You can see as we walk down, um, I've got gladiola, scabiosa, and status kind of interplanted together. Got a lot of sunflowers here. Uh, we're just doing like a really, really quick comb through the field because we're about to get more rain. And uh, we all know how I feel about rain. More mixed celosia. I think a lot of these are actually from Florette up in here. You can see McKenna is uh, trying to cut down sunflowers as fast as she can. Oh, then we have a dead spot because we were going to put water barrels there that we did not end up needing at all. And here's all of our succession plant stuff. So we have amaranth uh, back there, more scabiosa, asters planted, um, a couple different successions of zinnias. Um, so we had a bunch of stuff that didn't survive because June was so hot and we had no rain. Got basil back in there too. Um, yeah, and then it goes out to here. Uh, next year, so we're going to be prepping this space that's back kind of behind. Uh, that's all going to be perennials and spring stuff. So you'll see ranunculus and tulips and anemones and larkspur and delphinium and all sorts of stuff in there. Um, but yeah, these are all of our sunflower successions and you can see that they're starting to bud up too. We are just, we're swimming in flowers guys because August harvest season is like, it's the best. It's just, it's just so lovely. I mean, oh, the zinnia colors here though, like, they're so beautiful. This is where we're at with flowers. That's Joseph. And uh, McKenna has to hold them because there's so many. So I think the real question here is how many flowers are too many flowers? Um, like, is this too much? No? 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 That's not too much? Uh, what about this? No, still good. Um, what about what about this? Too much? Too many flowers? Too many? What about this? Oh, oh, more? Yeah. Um, oh, what what about what about back in here? Too many flowers? Um, <laughs> I don't know if you can see in the cooler, but like there is a ton of sunflowers in there. So well, we're just. We're just we're just gonna say it's it's busy. It's busy on the farm right now. Um, we're gonna make these all into bouquets. We're gonna send them off to the corn stands. And uh, yeah, flower farming's fun. <laughs> so I think that's all for me for tonight. As always, thank you guys. Uh, please like and subscribe to the channel. It helps us out a lot. Um, one, it's fun to see who's following us from like all over the world. And um, two, we're so excited to uh, share our flower farming journey with you. So yeah, yeah. Did you see me? I'm sweaty. Also, I don't know if you can see back there, but it's freaking raining again. More rain. Literally nobody in our area is happy about this. So much for me. 
Okay, bye guys.